All right, this is section 8.1, uh, Modeling Inverse and Joint Variation. Uh, in this chapter, we're going to be studying rational functions, how to graph them, how to add and subtract them, and multiply and divide them. But the first thing we're going to talk about is inverse variation, which is really the simplest form of a rational function. So to, to have inverse variation, two variables can have that, x and y. They show that in vari inverse variation if they're related as follows y is equal to a over x. We call a the constant of variation and it's really slope. Okay? And the important thing here is that a cannot be zero because then you'll eliminate this inverse variation. To read it, uh, we say varies inversely. So in this case, y varies inversely with x. That's how you would read this statement here. It's important to know, especially in example four, that we can use different va variables to, to demonstrate these functions. It doesn't always have to be y and x. And so you'll see that in example four where we change the variables up. Okay? And as far as how is inverse variation related to a rational function, well, if a is equal to one, we have the parent rational function of one over x. That's the simplest rational function. So if a is one, we have a function that's 1 over x, and that is a rational function, and that's what we're going to be studying in this chapter. All right, so in example one here, what we're going to try to do is see if we can identify whether or not an equation is in uh, inverse variation form. So what we do is we have three examples. We have x. Uh, times y equals 7, y equals x plus 3, and y over 4 equals x. And we want to know whether or not x and y show inverse variation. So the key thing you want to do here is make sure you solve your equation for y to determine if the relationship is inverse variation. So in this first example, we don't have y solved for. So if you divide each side by x, we get y equals 7 over x. So there's our inverse relationship. 7 over x, a is 7. Here, the second example, we already have y solved for. We have y equals x plus 3. This is a linear equation. This is neither. It's neither direct variation because we have a, a y-intercept of 3, and it's not in, uh, inverse variation because there's no division. It's not a over x. Okay, so this one is neither. Anytime you have a linear equation in the form of mx plus b, you won't have either inverse variation or direct variation. Finally, the last one here, we have y over 4 equals x. To get y by itself, we multiply each side by 4. So we have y equals 4x, and this is direct variation, 4 times x. So again, when you're looking to determine whether or not two variables have inverse relationship, make sure you solve for y and they need to have the form of a over x to be inverse variation. So in the next example, we actually know that the variables x and y vary inversely. We know that when y is 7, we have x equaling 4. So we want to write an equation that relates x and y, and then find y when x equals negative 2. So there's two things we're doing here. Number one, we have to write an equation that relates x and y. We have to write that inverse relationship. Secondly, we have to find y when x equals negative 2. It's important to know that if we're writing an equation for inverse variation, y equals a over x is what we're looking for. But we have to find a. So if you solve this equation for a, you get a is equal to y times x, and that's very important. So let's write this equation that relates x and y. It varies inversely, so we know we're going to have y equals a over x. To find a, we multiply y times x. So y is 7, x is 4, so that means a is 28. So here is our inverse equation, y equals 28 over x. That's step one. Step number two, they're asking us to find y when x equals negative 2. So all we need to do now is substitute negative 2 in for x, which I've done here in red. 
So 28 divided by negative 2 is negative 14. So it's just important to know when you have your inverse variation equation and you're looking for either x or y, plug in what you know. In this case, we knew x, we were looking for y, and we just simply have to substitute. Example 3 is going to continue on the idea of do we know what inverse variation is? And this example, or we're asking if this data set shows inverse variation. We know that a is equal to x times y. So if we know that's true, we have to show that all of these products, x times y, are equal to the same number because a is a constant. It has to be the same over and over again. So we just multiply x times y all the way through. 4 times 21 is 84. 6 times 14 is 84. 8 times 10 and a half is 84. 8.4 times 10 is 84. All of these products, x times y, are 84. A is the same. So yes, this data set shows inverse variation because A is 84 for each one of these. So if these weren't all 84, we'd have a problem. It would not be inverse variation. So just keep that in mind. Make sure when you take these products of x times y, you have the same value. 84 is our A value. The last little part we're going to talk about is joint variation. And that's when we actually combine more, two or more quantities using products. Okay? So we have z equals a times xy and p equals a times qrs. Uh, now a is still your constant of variation. And this is how we'd read those. z varies jointly with x and y. Okay? And that's a times x times y. Okay, and here P varies jointly with Q, R, and S. Okay, so joint variation means we combine two or more quantities. We can have uh, direct and inverse variation together, and you'll see that in the final example. Our last example here is asking us to write a relationship for each statement. Okay, so what we're going to do is read the statement and try to translate that into a, an equation. So you've got to look at what you have. Here we have y varies inversely, okay, with the square of x. Well, the square of x, that's just x squared. Varies inversely, well, that's the division, y equals a over x, but we don't have x here. We have x squared, so there is y varies inversely with the square of x. In the final example, we're using different variables. Remember in the beginning I said you can use different variables to model these, these inverse variations. So b, x varies jointly with w and t and inversely with s. So there's two things. Varies jointly with two variables. So we have x equals a times w and t because that's what x varies jointly with. That's that multiplication. And inversely with s. There's the division. So we have everything over s. So x varies jointly with w and t is in the numerator. There you go. And inversely with s, everything is divided by s. So that's section 8.1 with inverse variation and uh, joint variation, and we'll see you for the next lecture.